Welcome to another episode of That Some Crazy Shit with Kelly and James. My name is Kelly and my co-host is Mr. James. Your co-host with the most. Co-host with the mostest. Yeah, what's, what's up, friends and listeners and co-hosts? <laughs> there you go. So it is, uh, we are deep into season seven. And I can say that because I think we're like on episode five or something. But we have a really kind of cool guest today, right? So she's an author and and she'll talk about her books, but she's not necessarily visiting us today to talk about her books. She's visiting us to talk about her very strange paranormal experience that she had that she decided to share. And I know that we have talked about this before about how, you know, people don't want to share their experiences. And she was actually encouraged, you know, you know, was like, not what's what I'm looking for. She was happy that we were, you know, asked people to come out and share their experiences, I guess, right? Because she said that she's only been, you know, telling people about this for the last 10 years, although it happened a while ago. That's, that was a lot. That seems to be the common thread with all our guests and people that come on. It's like, and that, and that's why we started this, is they didn't have a platform somewhere to go and, and share their experiences. And that's why we started it. And that's neat to see that these people have somewhere to go because they're coming here and I'm sure they go to other places but it's yeah. nice that you know that's what we wanted and that's it's cool maybe more people will come out and share their more experiences yeah so our guest is her name is Mary Sarvis did I say it right? Sarvis Sarvis Mary Sarvis she is actually an author and she is actually an award winning author she's got a couple of really great books she'll tell you about them they're available on Amazon Um, But she is here to talk about her paranormal experience that she had and, you know, just kind of share it with us. So I just think we just get right to it. Let's do it, my friend. All right. Welcome to the podcast, author and lady who had a paranormal experience, Mary Savris. 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 I got that down. Mary, thank you so much for coming on the podcast and being a part of that some crazy shit. We're always excited when we can have a, a traditionally published award-winning author on our <laughs> show. But you're not, you know, to talk about not only your books, but your experiences with the paranormal. Well, hello, Kelly. Hello, James. And it is such a pleasure to be here today with your audience. And yes, I am thrilled to c- talk about an experience That happened to me 30 years ago, and it seems like it was yesterday. It's so fresh in my mind to this day. So can you share what that was with our listeners, Mary? Yes. Yes, I would love to. So um, 30 years ago, around that time frame, my husband and I purchased a 220-year-old farmhouse in Westford, Massachusetts, Now, that is located about 30 minutes from the New Hampshire border and about a half hour from Concord, Massachusetts, and is a beautiful piece of property, four acres rolling, and it used to be a dairy farm. Nothing unusual occurred in this home, and it really was a wonderful time to share the place with family and friends. So we had purchased it that year, it would have been in the spring, and in October, I found myself to be expecting, and it was our first child, and it was a wonderful time in our lives. Well, unfortunately, we had just told everybody in the family that we were expecting, and I had miscarried the next day. So that fall into um, early winter, I was very um, depressed about it. I was discouraged and I was also afraid that if I became pregnant again, that I would lose this child again. 
So that was my mood going into that winter. We had gone through the holidays, nothing unnormal. Everything was fine. And now we're into early February. And um, Kelly and James, I mean, it's cold. It's cold in Massachusetts near the New Hampshire border. And so we're probably approaching zero. And the way my house was situated was a portion of the house was a center hall colonial small one. And at some point through the centuries, I guess, they had connected it to the to the barn, which was um, a dairy farm. So now I have this 220 year old antique home and I would always come out of the barn side and it was an, and it didn't look like a barn. It was attached to the house. For this, for some reason, this particular day, it was early in the morning, I was preparing to get ready to go off to work, and I'd come out on the side, the other side of the house, where the, um, the, the home actually was, the main part of the house. So I walk out and the um, the cup the pathway is covered with snow. Now underneath the snow, being this time of the year, you could have a covering of ice and then fresh snow over it. I didn't think anything of it. And um, just to give you a perspective, it was a cold morning. To the right of me, I lived on the Main Street. So this was Westford, Massachusetts Main Street. To the right of me were the leg was a leggy for Scythia bush. Obviously, this time of the year, there's nothing but dead branches on it. So nobody from the main road could see me. And I start walking on this path. And as I come near the driveway, all of a sudden, I knew I was, go I slipped, I knew I was going to go head first. Now, what I didn't tell your audience is that I had just found out that I was expecting a child. So the fear within me was even more elevated than ever. Now I'm going head down first. Well, something happened to prevent that from happening. I was wearing this navy blue wool coat. I had boots on, you know, maybe in, um, they were two inches or so, no big deal. As I started to fall forward, I literally hovered. Time stood still. And I had enough time to put out my hands and to brace myself for this fall. I didn't hit my head. I was just falling forward as time stood still, enough time to put my hands out and brace myself. And I just floated down on top of this snow and ice underneath it. And I remember I just picked my head up because I looked down, my hands are now braced. And I remember looking around and saying to myself, what just happened? I realized I experienced something in the supernatural. Now I always wondered, was this the age of the house? Was this my guardian angel? Or was this a benevolent spirit that had lived in this home? It was 220 years old and knew my thoughts, my feelings that I was experiencing. So I picked myself up and I never told anybody about this whole ordeal because I would have thought that they were going to say you're crazy ass. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? Right? Wow. And it's really only been I think the last decade that I have come forward, but my experience with this is really as if it happened yesterday. You don't forget something like this. And wow. what made you finally decide to come forward at what point were you comfortable being like you know what i'm just gonna tell somebody and i don't care who they what tell they say, yeah yes. what they think um you know what um 
talking with friends who've maybe experienced a divine intervention. We all experience divine intervention in our lives, but to what extent, you know, it, it may just be something that was coincidental. But I had a friend that was talking and I, at that point was a, a decade ago. And I said, you know what, something happened to me and I no longer feared talking about it. I felt that it was such a part of me and I'm a normal person and that this truly, truly happened. And they believed me, you know, it's not that I, they, they questioned who I was or what happened, but they truly believed that I had this experience. And then I shared it with my kids. They were a little bit older. I've shared it with my husband. He sometimes poo poos it, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> that, it, well, it, it's hard sometimes for people to, you know, be open-minded to that, you know, yes. and that's why we do our shows. It, this, these things happen out there. Oh, so, after experiencing this Kelly and James, it happens. So did you, after it happened, did it, did it change maybe your spirit, your spiritual practice or your spiritual views? Did it, did it maybe change that a little bit and make you, maybe you had, uh, became a little bit more open-minded where maybe you weren't? Um, it reinforced by beliefs because I already believed that there's something greater than us, a higher power. This to me, just reinforced it that yeah there's somebody that's looking after us and but let me tell you I've walked with my children when they were little I've tripped I've fallen there was nothing that great to me <laughs> like this did and always in the back of my mind I would say to myself damn it where are you now <laughs> So did you, did that experience too, did, does it show in your writing? Because you're an author. So do you write about the paranormal? Yes, I am a fiction author. And, oh, excuse me, just lost one of my ear pods. It fell out from being so excited to be here with you. Can you still hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, well, yes, it did. My first novel, I'm an author that loves to write with quirky titles. So my first novel is titled Tiger's Love, Bubble Bath, and Obsession Perfume. Who knew? It's right behind me. It's got the tiger in the bubble bath. Now, that is a um, murder mystery um, intertwined with the supernatural. So yes, and to be honest with you, I felt very comfortable writing within that genre and bringing in the supernatural. So it did, it did influence me, yes. And my second book, um, which is a trilogy, The Girl in the Toile Wallpaper, um, that's a trilogy, um, a fantasy adventure trilogy. So I bring in a lot, I love to live in fantasy because the reality is too real. And I think many people <laughs> feel that way nowadays, but um, yes, yeah, so it is a big influence in my writing, but I can tell you the way it's changed me is I don't fear it. You know, I fear the. I'll be honest with you. I fear the dark side. And when I do have to write, I will never get to that point point where it's such a dark side because I do fear it but the that whole other benevolent side I have no fear of it which is um but I think that was part of my um experience that there's somebody looking after you so what you know when you're writing about the paranormal and it's fiction and you've had yeah. this experience that influenced it but what type of research are you doing so when you say paranormal in your books yes. what to what length or to what level of paranormal are are you speaking fantasy gotcha <laughs> I'm writing in a fantasy realm where um I just I, I've created my characters and this is how I think they would react to something they are facing and in my first book Tiger's Love Bubble Bath an obsession perfume, who knew? The paranormal part is um, wishes. They are elderly and they're given the chance 
true wish to make their greatest wish ever. Unfortunately, what happens is their last wish. So the reader becomes part of this whole paranormal experience the characters are experiencing, um, but not the, not the other characters. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a fantasy part that I bring in. Interesting. We have so many guests, Mary, who after they've had a paranormal experience, it seems to put them on this path like you, where you're now, you know, you're, you're an author now, and mm -hmm. you incorporate that into your writing. We've had people who, you know, become teachers or, you know, investigators after. It's interesting how these affect us so heavily. These yes, and, and, and I can tell you, Kelly and James, it did not affect me to the point where I wanted to investigate it further. Um, I just felt, wow, this was a gift given to me. And I'm going to appreciate it. And I'm going to love to talk about it because this was a positive experience. Right. And at the time when it happened at the time, did you did you question it or did you accept it for what it was? Oh, I, <laughs> I immediately <laughs> put up and I looked around just it, it, you know, trying to, your mind, you know, you're thinking your mind is playing games on you. And I really experienced this. So I just said, oh my goodness, like what just happened here? Oh, I questioned it. And I looked around, did anybody see it? There's no way anybody could have seen it. It was just me. And I knew I was a businesswoman. I was a rational person. I know this just happened. I know it. <laughs> to this day, as I said, I can see it. I can feel it. It's just such a part of my memory. Very cool. Very cool. Mary, are you working on anything now? Yes, I am. As I mentioned, my latest book um, was published, traditionally published um, the end of 2021. Um, uh, the Girl in the Toile Wallpaper. And Toile is a wall covering or a um, fabric that's so much a part of our lives, but people may know not, may not know that it's called Toile, but it tells a story. It's usually two-toned, beautiful, vibrant colors. Well, I would um, see this in my home and I said, there's fantasy in there, there's romance, there's betrayal. And I wrote, that was published. Now I'm working on the second book in the trilogy, which um, you're going to be excited to hear is very much in the supernatural. Mm. And I can, Kelly and James, I have to tell you, it is the hardest thing I've ever worked on. And that is currently being edited. My editor, she's fabulous. I love her, but she's very tough. And I keep saying, you know, I've never, I've never been to heaven. I've never been to hell. I've created a world around this, a supernatural world. It's fantasy. And, um, but it is very hard when you have not experienced like, I can't say I've experienced death. I've experienced life, but I'm trying to um, bring this into the second book of this trilogy. So, did, so what research did you, did you do any research to kind of figure out, you know, based on other people's experiences, what that might look like to kind of help you write about it? Yes, great question. I did. I did go on the internet and I've been looking at what people have experienced experience and after death um, experiences. And um, I do, I love reading that. And um, do I take that into account? To a point, because I am still creating a fantasy world. Mm. So I can bring in certain things that are still, as my editor says, you still have to be logical. And I'm like, but it's fantasy. <laughs> 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 very true so mary before this experience happened how open were you to these experiences did you think that the paranormal was real um i thought it was real but it scared me to death 
honestly. It's not something, you know, we grow up, we watch the horror movies, and it's not something I ever wanted to experience. So no, I was very much scared of it. And um, as I said, I was given a gift with this. So this was such a beautiful supernatural experience that I have such a positive feeling about it. So did you ever, and I don't know if most people do, but do you, did you ever make the connection between the paranormal and religion? Um, yeah, I am a spiritual, I am a religious person. And um, in the Tigers Love Bubble Baths, who knew, um, yes, I do bring that into focus. And yes, for me, there is definitely a connection between both, between my religious aspect and the supernatural part. Yeah, because so I, 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 oh, go ahead, James, go. no, go ahead. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I have a question, Mary. Um, I don't, I'm not sure how familiar you are with the paranormal world, but if you were to have another paranormal experience, what, have you ever thought about what you would like it to be? Would you like to see a, a ghost or would you like to see you know, a Loch Ness monster or something? Have you ever thought about that? You know, I have because um, a very dear friend of mine passed away a year ago and we were like sisters and she died of geoblastoma cancer. So um, I, what I experienced I, with, with her is I experienced coincidences that happen. Um, I was moving from Connecticut to Florida and she never wanted me to move, but she knew I was going to move before she had passed away. And halfway through the move, um, all of a sudden I looked down on my phone and I'm calling her. There's no way I could have dialed her phone number because I would literally have had to go into my phone. I, and I went, oh my God, what did I do? I'm calling you, Laura. I was not calling her. I would have to physically take that number out of my contacts and call her. So these are recent experiences that I've had and I'm not afraid of them. Would I like to see her? No, I think that she knows that would scare the heck. <laughs> <laughs> but these little connections that happen at the weirdest times, um, all of a sudden, boom, she appears on my phone. So I think there is a connection between us and that supernatural world. And the iPhones are playing <laughs> a part for us. And that... No, go ahead, James. Go okay, ahead. So, and, and it's funny because we've talked about now how spirits use the technology that we have at hand now. You know, they communicate through email. Remember that, guest Kelly? Mm -hmm. And, you know, through cell phones, getting messages through just cell phones. And I personally believe there are no coincidences, Mary. So there is a reason yeah. that happened. Yeah. See, I'm trying to be reasonable in front of people and say I've had these coincidences, but you are absolutely a hundred percent right. I still don't want them looking at me and saying, You're nuts. You're crazy. You got that crazy stuff. Yeah. But it's funny because a lot of people have had experiences and they've written them off as, oh, I was half asleep or, oh, my mind is playing tricks on me or whatever, but they probably actually really had a paranormal yeah. experience, yeah. you know? No, if, if I had experienced this while I was sleeping, I would have thought, eh, maybe it was a dream, but I was wide awake. We were <laughs> moving our furniture and this has happened with my friends a couple of times already. So I truly feel this is her way of connecting with me. She was a good, she was very techie. Whereas my father-in-law has passed on, he's not techie at all. And I'm not getting any uh, messages from him on my iPhone. Right, that is so funny. Mary, thank you so much. If people wanted to check out your books or, you know, do you have a website or how, and, or, and where are your books available? Oh, thank you so much for letting me give a little plug. Yes. You can find me on www.mary, M-A-R-Y-K-S-A-V-A-R-E-S-E.com. As I said, I'm an author that loves to write with quirky titles. And if you love mystery, romance, or fantasy adventures, check me out. And um, 
you can go on my website. It'll lead you to Amazon. I'm in all the independent bookstores. I'm in Barnes and Noble. If the book's not on the shelf, they'll just order it. And my books are titled um, Tiger's Love, Bubble Bats, and Obsession Perfume. Who knew? And my latest trilogy, the first of which is The Girl in the Toile Wallpaper. Thank you so much. Mary, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your experiences with us. Uh, we appreciate you. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, it's, this was just so wonderful to share this with you. It's truly been my pleasure. All right, then. You know, I wonder, it, it's interesting how paranormal experiences shape the path of people's lives in ways you don't really need. Yeah, because now it's a part of her writing, right? right. Although, her, although what she writes is fiction, that experience really had a profound effect on her. And you never know. Another thing I've realized, James, it doesn't matter when these experiences happened. Everybody always says that I can remember it like it was yesterday. It's true. It's true, and it's funny because it's the same way with my experiences. But I've noticed as the older I get and the further from the experience I get, I can run it back through my memory just like video. You know, I just like I was there, but I can't now put it into words in an order in a story I used to be able to. Because mm. I'll, I'll like start at the beginning, then I'll skip like to 20 pages in where before I could go to page two, you know, and it's like, yeah, but in your mind, you can see it and you run it over and over and it's the same thing. Is that? Yeah. I so, understand that. you know, she just, you know, it's, it's it really did affect her into the point that, you know, that's that's what she writes, you know, kind of paranormal fantasy fiction. So you can get her books on Amazon. Like she said, there are two of them or really anywhere books are sold. So you ready for us? Okay, quick. go ahead. Uh, you and her are book people. And I am not. When she says a traditional author, what does that mean? A traditional published author Pub means yeah, that she yeah. has a publisher. She has a random house. She has a penguin. She has a publisher. See, back in the day, publishers would take on an author and pay for all the marketing and publishing of the book, the selling of the book. And the author would, um, and the publisher would promote the book, and the author would get royalties, right? So if you had a publisher, somebody was going to invest in you because they believed that they could sell your book. These days, because of the world that we live in, a lot of publishers are hybrid publishers where they might publish your book, but they're going to do it for a fee. They might even, but you know, a lot of times they don't do any marketing. Right, the marketing of your book as an independent author is up to you. Oh. Right, so you don't have a even if you have a publisher, they may do some marketing, but a lot of that is up to you as the author. The days of you being like a Stephen King and an Anne Rice, yeah, no, most authors are out there hustling. So when she says she's traditionally published. She's meaning that she has a random house. She has a penguin publisher. She has a, a publisher who's publishing her books for her. And Thank usually you you're sharing your yeah. knowledge. Yeah, and usually your publisher will also provide your editor, right? So it's all one stop shop. This publisher is gonna help you get that book to market and they're gonna and they're gonna sell it for you. Book tour, the whole nine. Doesn't work like that anymore in the real world. Yeah. Not anymore. So that's what she means. So even if you're even if you're a badass author with a badass book, that doesn't happen anymore. Well, if you're a badass author with a badass book, you find you gotta find a publisher first, right? I'm sure there's a lot of badass books that do not get published. Oh, I'm sure, huh? Right? So I mean you gotta find a publisher. Just because you write a book, and I learned this the hard way, just because you write a book doesn't mean somebody's gonna publish it. Gotcha. You gotta shop it. Or you say, I'll go get an agent. Okay, you got to shop for an agent. An agent's got to be willing to take you on. Now, this here's a random thought. Sorry. Have you ever heard that song? Hey, you better shop around. 
I have. James, it's like a really old song, dude. Yes, I've heard it. <laughs> but I'm just saying. The That's publishing all, I world see, I is... I understand that. So right on. Go so, right on. you know, if you're looking to be an author, you know, it's not as easy as it sounds. The writing of the book is probably going to be the easiest part of your journey as an author. If you're going to promote it and publish it and want people to buy it, you got to hustle. You got to get out there. You got to find your audience. Easier said than done. Yep. That's what she means. Okay. You ready for some random bullshit? You want, uh, you go on random bullshit this time. What you got for me? Okay. So I read an article today about the first penis transplant in 2014. <laughs> right? This was in 2014. This is 2022. So this is a while ago. Because I was reading about uh, transplant surgeries in the, in the 21st century and how far we've come from, say, back 600, 600 BC, right? So not only can they transplant a penis, they now can transplant the scrotum and the penis, okay? So I was like, man, that, wow. So my question to you would be, you know, would you want another man's penis? I mean, it's not like getting somebody's heart or getting, because those things are universal with men and women. We all need a heart. We all need kidneys and shit like right. that. But a <laughs> penis? I mean, you know, would you want another man's penis? This is... All right, uh, then. <laughs> that's my <laughs> okay. random bullshit. <laughs> so... Would I want another man's penis? That's, I never that, I thought I'd never hear those words come out of my mouth. But and they can do I, it. They can do it. Well, you know what? I might. I might. All right. Okay, I have a question now. <laughs> can you upgrade? I don't know. Well, that's an implant, isn't it? So they have implants. Implants have been around for a long no, time. Implants are just if you. If you if you're flaccid, you can't get erect. I thought implants were there to make you bigger, like like breast implants. No, not that's not the way. As far as I know, I'm, I'm uh, not an you, expert on. To say you know a lot about implants, yeah. my I friend. know a lot about a lot. Yeah, okay. that's why we're here. I'm just saying. Hey. All right, so but go back. Hey, could you could you upgrade? I don't know. The surgery could didn't you add say Wi-Fi. I don't know. I don't know what that entails, right? And I don't know a lot about the surgery. It just really, as I started thinking about it, I was like, man, that's that's some surgery right there. I mean, you're talking a penis yeah. transplant. All right, like, all right. I'm going to take the penis off of George and we're going to put it onto Bob. Because something happened to Bob's penis. And now we can do the scrotum. So not only can we give Bob a new penis, we can give him new balls too. Oh, so you get the whole unit, huh? You can now. I think that was successful in 2000 and I want to say 17 or 18 at Johns Hopkins. Yes. Okay. Now here's, here's a, just a, it took me six weeks to recover from my shoulder. How long does it take you to recover if you get a new unit with so, Wi-Fi installed? I, like I said, the article I read didn't go into actual people that have had the surgery. It went into about the surgery and how it was performed. I couldn't find any information on like, who had the surgery back in 2014 and does their unit work? I couldn't find anything on that because that was my first question. Well, what's successful? Was it successful back then? Is it still successful today? This dude was only like 21 or something like that. He was young that had this oh, transplant. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just saying. Interesting. You know, he, you know, I was just wondering, but that was my random bullshit because I figured that was really random, but you never answered my question, Mr. Oh. James. The question at hand is, would you take another man's penis? And hopefully the man's penis that you are taking is dead. I'm just saying, you know, and if okay, they can so put, I think if they, they can put Mr. Have another man's penis, 
Yeah, I, 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 I guess, yeah, sure, I don't care. But like I said, if I have a choice, I'm upgrading. Well, I and I would imagine too, in all seriousness, that everything would have to match up like an an organ donor, right? You would have to have. I would think. I, again, I don't know. I'm just. Well, hey. well I, you know, without. Well, I guess we could get those fucking graphics. Huh? If if let's say I had to get a, a penis and I'm a average sized penis, you know, whatever that may be to your definition, could I upgrade? Could I get a little? As, Meteor, as the person receiving said penis, do you get to pick right. said penis or do you just take the first available penis? Right. And here's another question for you. What makes a viable penis? There you go. Because... Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, now here's some more cases. <laughs> <laughs> what if we got a guest who had a penis transplant? If you can find one, I have questions. Yeah, I got questions too. <laughs> got questions. So, hey, and one of the other things I read about as far as surgeries in the 21st century is they can now do a uterus transplant. Now, I personally, as a woman, wouldn't want any other woman's uterus, barely want my own. Um, but <laughs> I'm just saying, I guess in some instances, if somebody wanted to try to have children or there's something going on, they can now transplant a uterus. And that's some crazy shit. That's got to be some very in- intricate surgery, even with the penis. And and so bad that the, the, the part of me just wants to call it just a dick because that's what it is. Just dick surgery. When you're attaching one man's dick to another man, I would imagine there's like a lot of veins and arteries, no arteries nerve yeah, endings and all types of stuff going endings. on, right? I would, yeah, man, yeah. think about that. That's got to be some long ass, tedious surgery. In all seriousness, you got to be one hell of a surgeon to reattach a penis. Or transplant when not even reattach it. You're transplanting yeah, it. Transplanting a whole different unit, man. Interesting. But here's another question. Is Shoot. the penis still attached to the person that you're taking it from? Like, you know, the heart can't be or whatever, but like when when you give somebody a kidney, you know, you guys are right there on the table. I just I mean, do they like how do you I have so many questions. Yeah, you have a lot of questions, and I can't help you because I have never had one. But anyway, planted. that was my random bullshit. Thank you for for entertaining me for yeah. that that seven seven minutes, if that's even how long it was. But I appreciate it because, again, and if you are listening and you know some of the answers to these questions, <laughs> or if you're thinking, if you're <laughs> pondering these two and you have more questions, like, well, what about this, Kelly? Or what about that? Let me know because I'm telling you, I got questions. That's all yeah. I'm saying. I yeah. got questions. If you're Don't a surgeon just- and you know how to do this stuff, let us know, man. I got questions. That's some yeah. surgery right there. Who came up with that shit? That had to be a dude. Had oh, to be. Yeah. <laughs> you know? All right. You I, I don't. Visit. I don't. I don't see a woman putting a priority and let. Let's, no. I, I got to figure out how to do it. Dick implant or transplant. Transplant, not even implant. Trans- yeah, transplant. Plant. And how many failed attempts did you have? Oops. <laughs> Before that one was successful. Yep. Who agreed Yay. to that shit? Who's like, yeah, Doc, go ahead. Go go ahead. Do it. Well, like I said, you know. It, it, and how much did it cost? Does oh, insurance yeah, cover yeah, that shit? Sure. Just saying. I would think if you were getting it, to, you know, and I don't know, I'm not an expert on insurance. But it probably covers it if you're dying. But if, like, you know, in my case where I just want to upgrade, I bet that's collective. How could transplanting your penis save you from dying? Well, maybe you have cancer or something. And they had to remove your penis. Wow. Wow. 
Okay, I have no words. Wow. So what did they do up. before? What did they do before? The surgery is fairly new. It's not even 10 years old. So what did they do before? Well, let's see. I would assume, and once again, I'm not the surgeon. I just play one on our podcast. But I would think, you know, for a case like that, they would remove all the soft tissue, maybe hook up some kind of tubing to urinate through. But I think the days of sexy time are over. Maybe you just had a prosthetic. And there are a bunch out there. I've seen them on the internet. Yeah. So See, maybe then you, just, you could upgrade too, man. Right. So maybe you just had a prosthetic, different. but now they can take it and transplant it. Like yeah. I said, how much does it cost? Does your insurance cover it? What's the recovery time? Does it work to its full capability? Man. And can you return it if it doesn't? Yeah. What happens if your body rejects it? Do you? Blech. What do you do? Because I mean, what what do you do then? Do you just walk around until the next donor comes up? Well, I don't think you're going to do a lot of walking, person. I would probably have to roll in the wheelchair. Back. Well, I'm just saying. Are you you know? Are you just going to be hanging out? Well, that's probably bad. Not anymore. <laughs> are you just going to be waiting <laughs> for yeah, the you're next not donor? Out no. <laughs> it's horrible. <You're> just patiently <laughs> waiting. Absolutely that would horrible. be rude to tell someone that <laughs> you need a penis transplant. Hey, man, you're just going to hang out. Well, fuck. That was a <laughs> Okay, okay. You can get us on our website at that's some crazy shit podcast.com. All of our social media is there. Although we have been social media quiet. For a minute, but yeah, I'm back. That's all right. I'm yeah, back. She's back. I'm she's back. back with the vengeance. I'm back with the social media, but you know, I gotta take a little breaks off the social media. That's off right. the off the soch. I, I don't know off if that's the what soch. they're calling it, but I'm calling it the that, soch. Yeah, we're gonna make it hip on the podcast. The soch. The soch. Yeah. I'm all right. Are you on the soch? Are you on what soch are you on? You know, the Insta. I don't think it's <laughs> Facebook anymore. It's called Meta. Me- Oh, is it Meta? Yeah, I, I always think of Mega, like Mega Mind. No, nope. Meta, right. Meta and the Twitter and the, uh, the Twit and the, there's something else, the Snapchat, the Tiki Talk. What what, what, somebody Instagram. gave us another one, the Clapper. That oh, they that's right, because I thought the Clapper was the turn lights on and off. Me too. Yeah, so there's all types of soch out there that we're not on. But the ones that we are on, check us out. Because we're kicking ass on Because we're kicking ass. All right, dude. Until next time. Keep your minds open, people.